Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Cypher Brief. I'm writer Ethan Supel. Um, I'm here joined today again uh, by Cypher Brief expert Mark Montgomery, a retired rear admiral, former executive director of the Cyberspace Solarium De uh, Commission, and um, a leader at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, DOGE, the Department of uh, Government Efficiency, headed up by uh, Elon Musk, and some of the uh, discussion about uh, cybersecurity concerns uh, uh, with the uh, agency's work. Uh, Mark, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me, Ethan. Thank you. So um, setting aside the debate over, you know, the work of Doge and, and their, their mission of finding government efficiencies, um, wh why is cybersecurity being brought up as an issue when we talk about this? So listen, Do Doge, I don't think you can 100% set aside what Doge is up to only because I loved how you said Ethan, Elon Musk is running at him. I think I think we just went through a, a protracted moment where we had to acknowledge Elon Musk wasn't running it because, and this gets at, to answer your question, he would have had to take certain actions to be a special government employee, and he didn't want to do them. He didn't want to submit to the, the level of scrutiny for conflict of interest and things like that. So he's not running Doge. He's just Doge cheerleader in chief. Uh, and <laughs> He's, he may be the decision maker, but, uh, and if he is, then it is somewhat unethical, if not illegal for him to not be an, a Doge employee. But I'll set that aside and say what this indicates though, is the bigger issue, which is that we are, we are allowing access to government systems by personnel and technology that has not been through the proper vetting or governance processes. Um, and if we're confused about whether Doge can screw up I would submit to you the, you know, page one of the Washington Post and New York Times for the last two weeks. There's tons of administrative screw ups in there. Accidentally fired the nuclear, you know, Naval Nucle National Nuclear Security Agency workforce for some of our labs. I mean, there's a lot of these issues. Um, but very specifically, Doge, if, if you can make those kind of mistakes, my guess is you can make a cybersecurity mistake. And, and I hear sometimes from its supporter, and look, I'm for government efficiency. So if you can find inefficiency, that's great. I would not break all the rules of IT security and governance in doing it. There is no reason to do that other than they think they can. And so they don't follow basic precepts of, is this person been properly trained on how to handle government information, on how to handle the PII, the personal identification information of people who've given it to the government? Things that we as citizens rely on. Things that right. President Trump has accused previous administrations of violating in the case of him and his supporters, he then is wantonly allowing these groups to do it. And if I can make one other complaint, it's there's this belief that like Elon Musk is Superman. He's got some special cape and, you know, on cybersecurity, he's special because, you know, he's made a lot of money in the IT world. Let's be clear. His two current two big companies, SpaceX and Tesla, are donkeys on cybersecurity. They've had terrible uh, ransomware or, and or um, loss of breach of data incidents. They're like everyone else. And Elon Musk is like everyone else. And telling me that Elon Musk is keeping an eye on the cybersecurity is like telling me my five-year-old is keeping an eye on the car. You know, it just, that doesn't do it for me. It needs to be someone with a license, someone who knows how to follow the rules and, you know, someone who I would trust with the keys. So I'm very unhappy and I'm unhappy that we're violating these law, these basic governance rules with no accountability. And uh, and I suspect that the accountability for the people making these decisions won't happen for months or years, if ever. Recognizing excellence in national security, the Cypher Brief Honors Dinner celebrates those who've made a real difference in protecting our nation. It's an unforgettable evening with top leaders in the field. Join us in honoring these remarkable contributions. Reserve your seat now at cypherbriefhonors.com. Are the issues here like the the vetting process and who and the personnel in Doge, um, or is it just you know these basic uh, practices that Doge are doing? And there's not an it's a little bit unclear about some of their activities, but there's reports yeah. you know they're using <clears throat> personal servers and computers, training AI models with government data, things like that. So yes and yes, uh, yes. I'm worried about the personnel and the vetting was obviously awful. I mean, these people are measurably under 
qualified for, for the jobs that they're doing. Um, they, and that, and then when you do the actual vetting of the human's performance, you find all these things they've done that in both their, as a, both as a human, but also as a cyber professional that cause you to think they should not be given unlimited access with no governance. You know, if the Chinese didn't already own OPM previously, they'd probably be back in there right now. But my guess is they're like, we've got enough of Montgomery's records already. We'll let it go. You know, this is a really frustrating thing. Um, years of practices and governance and doing things the right way or holding people accountable for not doing the right way are thrown out. What's the standard now? When they leave, what's the standard? Is the standard whatever I feel like doing? Is there a way to accomplish what the Doge team is trying to do and you know, have these, this kind of access while safeguarding security? Sure. Take your time and do it right. Mm -hmm. I mean, GAO does great assessments. GAO does right. not do great assessments in 18 days. They do great assessments in 18 months. I'm not saying you have to take 18 months. I'm saying you have to take the time to do it right. Right. I'm glad you brought up GAO, Government Accountability Office. Um, it's, a, it's another body that seems to have the same sort of access to networks for the same sort of auditing and efficiency review as Doge. Uh, but the difference there is the time, as, as you said. Well, the difference, and the, the most, more importantly, the difference is the adherence to rules and governance structures. Right. And I should be clear, right. as carried out by the GAO and not carried out by Doge. Right. Doge is not special. We're treating it like it's special. The president's treating it like it's special. So I, I think you mentioned this uh, earlier on, but why is this an issue that ordinary Americans should be worried about in, in terms of security uh, compromises? Well, I would say the government owns a startling amount of information about you. And that information is not contained in one agency in one file, <clears throat> but, but in multiple agencies and multiple files and different levels of information. Your IRS information is fairly revealing and compromising in the sense of, you know, exposing you to financial um, uh, malicious activity. Your, um, right. your information in, in HHS or Health and Human Services or Social Security Administration certainly could put you at risk for uh, exploitation um, by, uh, by criminal actors. And then for some of us that have been in the military, the intelligence services, there's information that puts us at risk from nation states and espionage. So right. I would say um, <clears throat> every American is affected. Every American is probably effective, affected in multiple agencies. And, um, and if you're in the military or intelligence services or fe uh, government service with clearances, then you're especially affected. So I don't think... Doge is going to be slowing down anytime soon. Um, so what are, what are your thoughts, concerns, and suggestions going forward? Well, I do think Doge will be slowed down by the court processes over time. You just have to get people who have standing. Some of this stuff will start to be impacted a little. Um, you know, I'd like to go back in time and make them adhere to standards. I can't do that. There's no indication to me that they're getting that much better. They might be a little, but as I said, some of the people that they failed to vet properly were fired and then rehired. Mm -hmm. So, all right. And we'll leave it there. Retired Rear Admiral Mark Montgomery, uh, senior director at the, uh, center on cyber and technology innovation at the foundation for defense of democracies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ethan. It's a pleasure.